Hey guys, Alex again. About a year ago, we put out a video on thread milling, and along with this video went a thread mill calculator that's actually turned out to be really popular and really helpful to some people. That was actually one of the first big projects I worked on here at Saunders Machine Works. And since then, we've put a lot of time into updating and refining that thread mill calculator, but we've had a few forum posts asking about the NPT thread milling side of things, which we didn't cover in that video and have since updated. So make sure that you have the most updated version of our Threadmill Calculator, which as of the filming of this video is revision 7, and then we can jump right in. Welcome to another Wednesday Widget. First thing you're going to want to do is download and open our Threadmill Calculator. If you've previously downloaded a version of this, make sure that you have the most updated version, Threadmill Calculator Revision 7. So make sure you have that downloaded and you should be good to go. We can move over here to the NPT internal tab. The first thing we're going to look at is this tool info box. So we are using a 0.388 diameter Lakeshore Carbide Threadmill with a crest of 3.5 thou. Now if you can't find this number anywhere, don't worry because a lot of manufacturers don't actually publish this. So our AB Tools thread mill that we used in our last video did have a published value. We took all of our thread mills and put them on an optical comparator and we measured the crest of each thread mill and graphed it here. A good rule of thumb that we have found and we're not quite sure why this is the case and it may not be the case 100% of the time is that your estimated flat length is going to be about 1 100th of your tool's cutting diameter. So for example, a quarter inch tool would have a two and a half thou crest. Another good place to find a starting point is to just use the line of best fit on our graph here. Last for the tool, you'll need to put in your neck diameter. Another important note is if you're using a multi-tooth thread mill, then be sure to set that to zero. This is important just so that we can run our tool checking algorithm and make sure you're not going to crash your tool into the walls of the hole or anything like that. Next, let's look at this main thread milling box. So each of the numbers in this box we pulled from the machinery's handbook. So we have H, which is titled our height of sharp V thread. We have TPI, which is just for our thread series. We have K0, which is called our basic minor diameter at small end of pipe. And finally, we have L4, which is overall length of thread. And each of these dimensions will end up driving our CAD model or our PDO, which helps us get that perfect thread mill on the first try. This is going to be the depth of your hole. So if you need a threaded hole that is shorter than the nominal value from the machinery handbook, you can put that in. Uh, an important thing to note is the further you screw pipe fittings in, the tighter they're going to get because of that taper. So the shorter that is, the harder it becomes to initially screw your fitting in. So I'll do a demo of this later with a half inch hole as compared to the nominal value. So once we have all of those values input in, we can come down here and these will give you the values that we'll need to model our CAD hole. So go ahead and start with this top hole diameter. We're gonna copy that value and then go over to Fusion. Make sure you're in the model workspace here and we'll just create a sketch on our top plane. We're gonna make a circle and its diameter is going to be that value we just copied, so 0.5863. And we'll stop our sketch. We need to offset a plane from that circle and that is going to be equal to our whole depth, which is 0 0.6006. So copy that, so go ahead and paste that in, and it's going to be negative in our case. Go ahead and hit enter. We'll create a sketch on that plane. Going to project the center point of this circle. And then we will create another circle. Its diameter is going to be our bottom hole diameter. So copy that. We'll go ahead and dimension that to that size. Stop our sketch, and we're going to use the loft tool. So we'll loft this top circle, and you'll need to hide the body for this since the sketch is in the middle of our part. We'll loft that to the lower profile. And you can see we get that nice slight taper that allows for a strong seal between the MPT threads. Click OK. And then I like to extrude the bottom of this just so we have a through hole to work with. Move into the manufacturer workspace. 
We'll go ahead and create a setup. It's important to note that nothing I'm doing here in the setup is crucial to the thread milling process. I'm just setting my stock to match the stock I modeled and setting my XYZ coordinate where I would like it to be. So that's all personal preference and you can make your setup however you please. And once we've got that setup made, we are going to create a spotting operation. So select drilling, select tool 16, which is our 3 16 spot drill. And I like to just set my bottom height to hold top and then offset it a negative 50 thou. And that gives us a nice spot depth. And then be sure you're set to drilling, wrap it out. And then we need to drill out the center of our hole. So I'm just going to duplicate that last operation. We'll need a 27 64 drill for this 3 8 hole. And I'm going to fix our height so our bottom height becomes hole bottom again. And check drill tip through bottom. The other thing I need to remember to do is select this through hole. So we're going to drill all the way down through our part. Next we'll need to do a bore and this will allow us to machine the taper of our threads. And it's important to note that both the bore and thread operations will do a 3D tapered operation. So the bore will actually machine the taper of our hole here. Using tool 31 here. I like to set the pitch of this to be the same as our thread pitch, but this is more of a personal preference and that will not affect your final thread. So you can machine that to a much finer bore if desired. Go ahead and select just our tapered face. And last but not least, we will need our thread operation. So we'll go ahead and select our thread mill. Running this at 7,500 RPM, one thou feed per tooth. And we will check both multiple passes and repeat passes. We're going to do four passes at 15 thou each. Our thread pitch is one divided by 18. And our pitch diameter offset is going to be pulled again from this spreadsheet. This is our pitch diameter offset here. And this is the number that drives your entire thread milling operation. So be sure to check out our last thread milling video to get an in-depth explanation of exactly what this number is. But this is more meant to be a quick and dirty explanation of how to mill your NPT threads. And of course, don't forget to select your face to machine. We want to thread just that one face, press OK. Then we'll go ahead and simulate this and make sure it's gonna work. So spot and drill, there's boring our hole. Looks great to me. Those all came out beautifully. I'm just gonna come in with a deburring tool, make sure we get rid of any burrs and clean out those threads. Just doing a quick test fit here, making sure that I can start all of our fittings. And like I said before, the second hole is our shorter depth hole and it's a little bit harder to start. It doesn't thread quite as far by hand as the other fitting. So just something to keep in mind if you're shortening your hole depth in the thread mill calculator. And all of these threads fit wonderfully. I'm way happier with the newer revision of the thread mill calculator than I am with the old one because I think had we actually put any pressure on the applications we use that for, we would just run into leak after leak. So I think this will work a lot better. Hopefully this works for you. Hopefully you learned something and we'll see you here next week here on NYC CNC.